This is Batman. You may know him for his incredible morals and ideals for not killing, especially against the Joker. But what if I told you there was a universe where he did kill him, turning Batman into a psychotic maniac and evolving him into a god among gods? If you thought the Hellbat suit or any other previous form of Batman was powerful, get ready for his most strongest state yet. This is The Darkest Night Explained. So I want to lay this out real fast. The universe Batman killed Joker was not an ordinary universe. You see in DC there's something called the regular multiverse where all things are normal. And then there's a dark multiverse. This multiverse exists because of the fear of the regular multiverse. So any fear somebody has that's manifested as a universe in the dark. And this multiverse villains are good, the bad guys win. And worst of all there's really evil Batman with powers. So some of these Batmans are speedsters like the Red Death. The Red Death originates when Batman wanted to steal the Speed Force from Barry. He fought him for it, dragged him across the world, and actually succeeded. But the Red Death is only one of many other Batmans. Let's look at the Devastator. In this universe, we not only have a fight between Batman and Clark, but also Doomsday and Superman. In Batman and the Devastator, we see a fight between Bruce and Clark. Obviously, Batman's losing until he injects himself with a Doomsday virus, making him a Batman Doomsday and he actually kills Clark. But like I said before, this is one of many other Dark Knights. But I want to take a look at the most important of them all, their leader. The Batman who laughs is the focal point of this video. He may seem weak right now, but he gets gradually stronger over time. We learn he originates from Earth negative 22 in the Dark Multiverse. This is an important thing to keep in mind about his origin. So we start off with a regular Batman and Joker fight, and then it instantly escalated. The Joker decided he wanted to stop making Batman go by the rules and break him. So like Batman's origin, when Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne both got shot in alley making Bruce Batman, he constantly recreated it in front of Bruce's face. And this entire time, Batman's tied up, so he can't stop him. Joker does this to hundreds of families and toxifies the kid survivors. This obviously pisses off Batman because of that one night in the alley, and that was all a part of Joker's plan. Batman breaks free and starts pummeling on the Joker and then murks him. Yes, he literally snapped his neck. But Joker had one last joke, when Batman kills him, he will infect him with toxin. After the instance, Bruce tells Clark how the chemicals that made the Joker, some of it went into him. And that makes sense, because Bruce is showing signs of the Joker. And knowing how smart Batman is, he should be able to find a counter to this. But remember how I said this happened in the Dark Multiverse? Because of that, the universes that these people live in, something evil must happen. And in this world, the battle between Batman and Joker merged these two characters into one corrupted Batman who laughs. Clearly the creation of the Batman Who Laughs was a pretty sad story. Like the Joker won, he made Bruce kill him, and in turn made a entity that started the beginning of the end. But we're getting too far, let's go a bit more slower. The Batman Who Laughs is basically Batman's mindset but with Joker's insanity. After he became this maniac, he killed the Robin family including Batgirl and then the Justice League. But that obviously wasn't the end of the one who laughs terror. He literally became the king of his universe. Yep, he conquered every aspect of reality. Even beings like the Spectre and the Phantom Stranger fell to him. But conquering one universe in an infinite multiverse isn't enough. So one day, being named Barbados went to the Batman who laughs. He explains to him the nature of the dark multiverse. He says when Batman from the main multiverse overcomes his fear of him killing the Joker, the Batman who laughs in his world will crumble. If you don't know who Barbados is, he's basically Batman's true father. I can honestly make a whole video on his lore, but he's the guy who teamed up all these evil Batman. He's the guy who caused this insane crisis event in Dark Knight's Metal. And the reason he picked the Batman who laughs is so he can have help on ending the main multiverse. Now an important question is what's his relation with the Dark Knights? Well, Barbados picked him to be their leader. In Justice League issue 33, we open up to the Dark Knights defeating the League. And that's honestly a very impressive feat considering how bad they defeated them. And while they're chained up, the Batman who laughs is in front of them all, clearly emphasizing that he's guiding them on as the leader. And later on in the comic, when they mess up, he yells at them and claims he should have got another Batman, as if he's the captain of the team. And then when the League breaks free because of Cyborg 1 million, 
He yells at them again to do their job and then he goes with Barbados. And this is all further backed up because in Dawnbreaker the Batman, when Batman from the Dark gets a Green Lantern ring and negs Hal Jordan, we see later on that all the other Dark Knights are all submitting to the Batman who laughs. And this all makes sense because in Green Arrow issue 32, we see it stated that the Batman who laughs is the most feared out of all the Dark Knights. So this all clearly in lines, he's the one who makes the rules for these guys. But there's one really important trait about the Batman who laughs, which leads us to our most important case about this darkest night. Like I said before, the Batman who laughs is Batman with his intelligence but gone mad. But why did I say this is so important? Well, that's because without his prepping, he would literally be just like the other Dark Knights. Because in Dark Knights Metal Issue 6, Barbados and all the other Dark Knights were defeated. But there was one Dark Knight who got away. The Batman Laughs was clearly far more intelligent than them and actually escaped. Although he was then trapped in Lex Luthor's facility. But trust me, this doesn't really matter that much and you'll see why. When Barbados was talking to the Batman Who Laughs, he explained to him about these cosmic entities. It was power beyond his comprehension, so he wanted to learn more. So although the Batman Who Laughs teamed up with Barbados and followed his plan, but deep down he had a plan of his own preparing how to become more than these cosmic gods. And clearly he figured out a lot. Remember how I said he was trapped by Lex Luthor? Well Lex Luthor kinda wanted to throw him out like the other Dark Knights. But he convinced Lex Luthor that he needed him because of how much knowledge he has on these cosmic entities. Once again showing this guy always has something up his sleeves to escape danger. And this is not the only instance. This is actually the key factor of his character. And Batman Who Laughs Issue 1, when Jim Gordon and Bruce are just now figuring out about the Batman Who Laughs, they describe him as the embodiment of Batman always winning. Because a Batman Who Laughs is a Batman who never loses. Because he's always going to be prepared for virtually anything. He even tells Lex Luthor, the reason why you have me chained up is because I want you to. In Year of the Villain, when the Batman Who Laughs infected multiple heroes, making the Shazam Who Laughs, Supergirl Who Laughs, and many more, Lex Luthor was smart enough to find a way to defeat them and cure them. Them. Lex then captures the Batman who laughs and takes him to his goddess Perpetua. Because at the time, Lex Luthor did work for this god. And as soon as it seems like they're gonna throw him away, he then uses his knowledge to convince Perpetua that she needs him. And it works, she replaces Lex Luthor with the Batman who laughs. So with all that prepping leads us to now. This is when I talk about the Batman who laughs most powerful state. When he ascends to godhood and becomes the darkest knight. So the Batman Who Laughs had its all planned from the beginning. In Legends of the Dark Knights, the Batman Who Laughs explains when Barbados picked him, he was sent out to get other Dark Knights to join their team. But there was one Dark Knight that he told nobody about. There was a universe where Batman found the Watchman button which released Manhattan's powers. So Batman decided to remake this machine that gave Manhattan this energy. So the one who laughs waited for him to go into that machine, trapped him, and then turned it on. And then proceeded to kill him before he unlocks his full power. From the very start of this moment he foresaw his ascension over these cosmic gods which leads us to where we're at now in flash forward issue 6 we see wally west one with the mobius chair this gives him the abilities of manhattan and infinite knowledge if you don't know how strong manhattan is he can alter the multiverse and is beyond space and time after this wally sees everything in the multiverse he's omniscient but with all this wally realizes something bad happened Remember how I said back in the year of the villain Perpetual and Batman Who Laughs teamed up? Well, for one, if you don't know who Perpetua is, she's the one who made the DC multiverse. And as of right now, she's weakened and wants to get more power. The Batman Who Laughs claims he can help her get more power, so she accepted him. But he still had way more plans in mind. He also wanted to change reality into his dark image. Infect the universe with evil Batman, Demon Robins, and imprison all the heroes and villains. That is why Wally West says the Batman Who Laughs is putting the multiverse in danger. And no matter what it takes or where he has to go, he will stop him. But when you remove an insanely smart guy's morals, bad stuff happens. In Death Metal Speed Metal, when Wally explains his life, he explains how the Batman Who Laughs was capable of off-guarding him and stealing the Mobius chair. And then in Death Metal Issue 1, they reveal he put Wally in jail after. Wally explains to Diana that the Batman Who Laughs is powering Perpetua with Crisis Energy. Crisis Energy is very basic. It's basically when a reality shattering event happens, and then that's considered a quote unquote crisis, and that gives off crisis energy. The Batman Who Laughs is amplifying Perpetua with the three main crises. He's giving her the Anti-Monitor's power, Dark Sides, and Superboy Primes. 
Diana then explains, okay, let's steal that crisis energy and give it to the Mobius chair. But the one who laughs cuts her off. And then this just enrages Diana and she kills him. But this was all a part of the one who laughs plan. Remember when I told you he hid the Dark Knight that has the powers of Dr. Manhattan? Well, he planned on taking over that body. So when he dies, he plans on putting his brain inside that body. And it worked. The one who laughs ascended to a state of near unlimited power. So in Legends of the Dark Knight, the Batman who laughs explains how his body is expanding. He becomes one with every dark Batman. Superman Batman, Doomsday Batman, any Batman you can think of is now a part of his power. He sees the entire multiverse all at once, and he does not consider himself a Batman who laughs. No, he's ascended into the darkest night. He became a being with cosmic awareness and holds multiverses in his hands. And at this point, his power journey was not done. He wanted more. So in Death Metal Speed Metal, Wally West starts explaining how the Darkest Knight is the most darkest and evil being to ever be in the multiverse. The Darkest Knight then starts chasing after Wally to steal his power. And Wally and the other Flashes literally couldn't do anything about it. And the one who laughs wasn't alone either. He started summoning other Flashes from the Dark Multiverse. There were Joker Flashes, Gorilla Grodd Flashes, and they were all destroying the speed force. But luckily, Wally West got to the Mobius chair and Diana sent the crisis energy to it. But as we know, the Darkest Knight is a trickster and he knew this was gonna happen and then he steals the crisis energy from the Mobius chair. And at that point, he became literally unbeatable. He proceeds to make a multiverse in the palm of his hands. A multiverse infested with dark copies of the original one. And then in Death Metal Rise of the New Gods, they call him a nigh omnipotent god that nobody can beat in the multiverse. And the only person who could rival his power, Perpetua, was then killed by him. And then after this, he steals her powers. So he's even more powerful. And we get more details in the last stories of the DC universe. Donna Troy explains that Darkest Knight remade reality and there's never been a crisis on this level. We then see every hero preparing for war. One huge point in this comic book was that everybody was going to fight the Darkest Knight. Diana was stressed. Batman was scared. Villains were even jumping in. And they were still losing. But they did do get help. And Death Metal Secret Origin, Superboy Prime joins the league. While the heroes are fighting the dark stories that the one who laughs made, Superboy Prime is fighting the Darkest Knight himself. Although the Darkest Knight was holding back, Prime was doing good. It comes to a point where he throws his retcon punch and that obliterates the one who laughs multiverse. And the impact left Prime dead. And that gave the heroes a fighting chance because that was less stories to fight against. But the Darkest Knight was still unaffected. Which leads him to his final fight. The one where it all ends. Wonder Woman. Perpetua was hundreds of times more stronger than Barbados, and Barbados can crack the multiverse by screaming. So imagine how powerful the Darkest Knight is. What the Darkest Knight really wants to use these powers for is to fight the hands. If you don't know what the hands are, they're basically cosmic entities that made infinite multiverses. And the writer himself says they rule over Perpetua. Right. That happens actually, I'm spoiling stuff, but at the end of Death Metal, um, Wonder Woman meets one of the beings that sort of governs beings like Perpetua. So clearly they're very powerful, but the Darkest Knight didn't get to fight them because of one person. In Death Metal issue 5, the Lee goes to the once Perpetua goon Lex Luthor for help. Lex Luthor explains how the one who laughs has the power to remake the multiverse, and in order for them to stop him, they have to go down to the Dark Multiverse. He plans on taking Wonder Woman to a place called the World Forge, and to make a machine that will make everything one story, so all the reality shattering Christ events will be undone. So Diana goes to the Forge, but she doesn't build the machine. She actually uses her lasso to connect everything into one universe, and then channels the Forge's power, making her a cosmic being. And after this, she goes right after the darkest night she became a being of cosmic awareness and was literally punching the darkest night across time and in the last panels of death metal issue 7 diana gets so strong she drains his power with each punch fighting not only for herself but for everyone else she punches him flying across time all the way into the end of all stories the death sun even after all that planning the darkest night goes back to route one begging wonder woman to stop and join his side but diana was determined that this is the one who laughs the Demise. Once known as Bruce Wayne in the alleyway, he's now getting his story forcefully ended by the Death Sun itself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is The Darkest Night Explained. 
I think that goes to show how lucky we are Batman has morals and isn't some insane maniac like the Joker. And I do want to address one inverse debate. The Darkest Knight is not above the hands. It's already directly stated that the hands will erase the Darkest Knight and everyone else. And they did it later on in the comic, which is why it stated nothing else was left. The hands brought it back though and gave us Infinite Frontier. And this video did take a while because the Batman Who Laughs Run lasted four years. Alright, thanks for watching.